Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So guys, we've seen a little bit of upward momentum. This is XRP on the hourly. Uh, and within the last couple of hours, we've seen a bit of a spike up here. Will it be sustainable? Uh, that is an interesting question. Um, as I said, this is XRP on an hourly. Uh, the video I did this morning was about the crypto market. And if we see a bull run, a spec bull run, um, institutional money pouring in, once regulations happen, we could see a series of events unfolding. Uh, I did not talk about the XRP. XRP utility and what we could possibly see uh, when regulations come to pass. I'm going to talk a little bit about that later on in the video. Right now, I wanted just to show you this Binance CEO, Cheng Peng Zhao, says a hidden burst in trading volume on Sunday triggered delays in Binance. So if any of you guys were uh, trading on Sunday after that huge drop, it was documented that Binance was having some uh, issues. Another thing I found funny from this same article, this is from the Daily Hodel, Tom Lee's 2019 Bitcoin forecast. And um, if you don't know, Tom Lee has been forecasting Bitcoin's price over the years. Fundstrat co-founder and head of research Tom Lee is offering his take on where Bitcoin will land at the end of 2019. Lee told Crypto Market News he believes the price of BTC will recover and be much higher than 3900 by the end of the year. I think that several things are going to support the price this year. The first is what we call macro factors. The fact that global markets are actually rising. Global stock markets are bullish for Bitcoin in the same way that last year's global stock markets fell and Bitcoin fell. The dollar isn't soaring like it was last year. So that dollar being weaker is a real tailwind for Bitcoin. And so that's an interesting point that Tom Lee makes. When fiat currencies don't do well, whenever there is a crisis around the world, we see Bitcoin soar. Right now, the US dollar um, is weaker than it was. And so that could be a moving factor as well. Uh, the technicals are much more attractive. Bitcoin is bouncing along its 200 week moving average. That's really been an important support in traditional markets markets and I think it's going to support Bitcoin's price here. And finally, I think there's true improved credibility of Bitcoin. The JP Morgan coin is really proving the use case of digital currencies. BACT is going to launch this year and that's a really good regulated way for institutions to trade crypto. All this after Tom Lee mentioned that doubling down, Tom Lee won't abandon his $15,000 year end Bitcoin price forecast. This was in November, 2018. After that didn't come true though, um, Tom Lee came out and saying, Tom Lee won't make any more Bitcoin <laughs> predictions. So uh, the fact that he is coming out here in uh, February and giving another prediction on Bitcoin by the end of 2019 is kind of comical. It's like, Tom Lee, make up your mind. Either you want to be in the prediction business or you don't. But moving on to more XRP related news, this is Ashish Fadani. That's at Ashish R. Fadani. Uh, you see where R3 is mentioned. And this is an article uh, talking about Canada experiments with digital dollar on blockchain and this was from back in June 2016 I tried to actually find the article myself and I found it here and the funny thing was back in 2016 r3 was not partnered or rather it wasn't at least public if they were partnered uh, with ripple and so we didn't know if um, they were going to be using cryptocurrencies or XRP or anything like that uh, but Canada experiments with digital dollar on blockchain so again from uh, two well now three years ago two and a half years ago it is using intellectual property developed by r3 three, a New York consortium of more than 50 of the world's biggest banks. And from this tweet here, you can see uh, that he's underlined R3. But when I did find this article, it was kind of funny because this was actually on R3's website. So there's a lot of this kind of thing where, you know, uh, all these companies that uh, weren't publicly partnered with Ripple or may have not had partnered with Ripple um, several years back have all these partnerships. And now that Ripple and R3, that that public um, partnership is now public. It's really kind of interesting to see how all these pieces are fitting together. Uh, one last thing here, XRP underscore Canada. Got to give him a shout out for this great article here. He retweeted AMB Crypto's article. Um, and the article is regarding the Indian government. So India, union government given four weeks by Supreme Court to draft cryptocurrency regulations and policy. Uh, and so blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies are still in their nascent stages. And many countries, including India, are looking to bring in regulations in the decentralized sphere. According to recent developments, the Supreme Court of India gave the union government an opportunity to make policy decisions about cryptocurrencies and their functions within four weeks reported Crypto Kanun. So India, they've got four weeks to get their ducks in a row, to get their cryptocurrency regulations drafted. Uh, and I don't know if you guys remember this, when you scroll down here, why this is 
important. And uh, XRP underscore Canada just made an amendment to this tweet. Ripple claims its 50% share in India is inroad to global markets. Ripple has a 50% share already of the Indian remittance market. And this was made uh, public by Ashish Birla, one of the main guys at Ripple back uh, last summer. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Indian remittance market is huge. And so how much is it exactly? Well, since 1991, India has experienced sharp remittance growth. In 1991, Indian remittances were valued at 2.1 billion. Now in 2006, they were estimated at between 22 and 25.7 billion. And this is more than a decade ago. I wanted to leave it at 22 to 25.7 billion for you guys, but I realize these numbers are really old. So 2018's numbers, a whopping 80 billion in remittance number one globally. So could we see $40 billion in remittances from India in four weeks? Well, we just got to wait and see guys. So I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.